welcome back to another episode of Derby Up and today I'm going to show you guys my Stasis Hunter build and this thing is amazing. Let's get right into the build. Alright, since we are on Stasis and we are a Revenant Hunter. I like to use Markman Dodge because it has a low cooldown of 29 seconds and who doesn't like dodging and reloading your weapons. You can use Gambler's Dodge but you do have an increased cooldown. But with the marksman dodge it's just nice to get that reload when you dodge with triple jump withering blade and dust field grenades i like to use the dust field grenades because they also have a low base cooldown about a minute four seconds and what's nice with these grenades is it actually helps buff us with more resilience so we can take more damage with this build aspects we're running grim harvest with Grim Harvest, uh, defeating Slaughter Frozen Combatants creates a Stasis Shards. Now these Stasis Shards are going to take place of our Elemental Wells. So picking up these Stasis Shards will replenish our abilities. Touch of Winter. Touch of Winter adjusts how your grenades act, which whenever you choose. With Dust Field Grenades, it increases our slow field size and creates small Stasis Crystals on impact. This is nice for burst DPS damage. So when you have trash mobs or a big group of enemies, throw your dust field grenade in there. It'll freeze surrounding enemies. You'll get that little stasis crystal inside. Destroy the crystal. Shout your damage. Very nice. With these two aspects together, gives us five fragment slots. First fragment slot is Whisper of Shards. This, this particular fragment is amazing. Gives us a 10 resilience. Shattering stasis crystals temporarily boosts our grenade recharge rate. Shattering additional stasis crystals increases the, ben the duration of this benefit. Next up is Whisper of Rhyme. Collecting stasis shards grants small amounts of overshield. So this is also going to aid in our survivability by getting a stasis overshield. And collecting additional shards refreshes the timer of that overshield. That overshield is going to last probably about 10 seconds. Um, if you want to extend that duration, I got a mod that will help out with that. Next, we have Whisper of Chains. While you are near frozen targets or friendly stasis crystals, you take reduced damage from targets. This also is going to aid in our survivability. Gives us a plus 10 recovery. Whisper of Durance. Whisper of Durance gives us a plus 10 in strength and your slow from your abilities last longer and they linger longer as well last fragment whisper of rending now with the season 19 just starting it's leaning itself more towards stasis since all the other subclasses got their 3.0 updates season 19 has given a lot of benefit towards the stasis subclass so if you haven't used stasis in a while i recommend dusting it off and giving it a try it is very very fun but back to the Whisper of Rending, primary ammo weapon weapons do increase damage to stasis crystals and frozen targets. So getting to the weapons I like to use, Blood Feud, this is the stasis sub primary submachine gun that was from last season. Mine comes with Headstone. And dynamic sway reduction. Dynamic sway reduction, I would like something else in this perk slot, but it is a decent perk. It improves your accuracy and stability when you're holding down the trigger. Now, headstone is very nice to use. Precision final blows with a stasis weapon will spawn stasis crystals where your victims fall. So this is also going to help us in our shatter damage. Also, throw that dust field grenade. It's going to make a crystal destroy the crystal shatter damage also if you get precision damage on any enemy with this sub submachine gun you're going to spawn crystals again so we're constantly spawning crystals constantly getting that shatter damage helps out amazingly the origin trait is right hook dealing melee damage gives this weapon increased target acquisition and range for a short period of time with this particular build you're not really going to be up in someone's face constantly meleeing them, but it does come in handy with the shuriken that we throw. 
My special weapon I like to use is the Deafening Whisper Void Waveform Grenade Launcher. This is very nice in when you have enemies grouped up together. Because if you you know with the waveform grenades, one shot on the ground, it sends out a wave of void energy and you can take out enemies very quickly. Mine comes with a nice perks of Ambitious Assassin, which overflows the magazine based on the number of rapid kills you get before reloading. So with this particular weapon that I use, when I get kills, I'm usually, when I reload, I will get two rounds in the chamber. It's very nice to have two rounds in the chamber, one ready to go, and second for a follow-up. And also an auto-loading holster. So this, when this weapon is holstered, it automatically reloads itself. Very nice to have. Heavy weapon of choice is Bump in the Night Rocket Launcher. This is a stasis or aggressive frame rocket launcher. This was from two seasons ago, season 17. You can still get this in Leviathan. Mine comes with tracking module. Tracking module just adds tracking ability to the rocket launcher. And chain reaction. Each final blow of this weapon creates an elemental damage explosion. So since I were running stasis, when you get a final blow with this, it creates stasis elemental damage explosion. Origin trait of extrovert. Final blows near multiple combatants or near nightmares restores your health. Since I'm not really fighting nightmares because I'm not in the Leviathan, but if you do this in trash mobs to just wipe them out, it will start to regenerate your health. Armor pieces, I have a stasis helmet, I have mobility, harmonic siphon. Harmonic siphon is when you get rapid weapon final blows with damage matching your subclass. So we're using the stasis SMG, we're creating orbs of power because of this. I use stasis siphon. When I defeat enemies with stasis weapons, I create more orbs of power. So I'm creating orbs of power a lot with this, with this two hits of Stasis Siphon and Harmonic Siphon. This is going to come in handy here in a minute and I'll show you why. Last, last mod is Elemental Shards. Elemental Shards, now what this does is like I said, we're not generating wells, we are generating shards which take place of our wells. These will restore our abilities, our grenades, our melees, our class, class ability very nice to use the exotic of choice that I like to run in this build is the renewal grasps renewal grasps what they do is they enhance your dust field grenades they have a much larger radius and once you or your allies are inside these fields you take reduced damage and also nice little bonus is if you're using stasis weapons you get a stasis weapon buff Mine is the solar damage, and it has a minor resilience mod, fastball, impact induction. Impact induction causing damage with your melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. So when I throw the shuriken it'll, and I kill enemies with it, it'll help restore my grenade energy, which is nice because we want to keep throwing our dust fill grenades. And now a mod that has become a staple in a lot of my builds is the font of might. Font of might is when you pick up an elemental well or our shards in this case matches our subclass energy type grants us temporary bonus to our weapon damage chest piece has arc energy with a discipline mod concussive dampener Mine has an arc resistance mod, but I should really change that out for the new seasonal artifact mod, Energy Diffusion Substrate. What that does is you gain small amount of resistance to the damage types that you get from your combatants. So think of these as you just resist mods for the season. And another Font of Might. Now these Font of Mights do stack on each other. For the legs, I have a solar with a discipline mod. Recuperation, which replenishes health each time you pick up an orb of power. So since we're doing stasis siphon and harmonic siphon, generate these orbs of power. You pick up these orbs of power, we're replenishing our health. 
And also with innervation, picking up these orbs of power cools down your grenades. And I like to run elemental charge. Elemental charge is when you can become charged with light by picking up an elemental well, which again, shards in our case, if these elemental wells match our subclass, which they will, we will gain two stacks of charge with light. And by becoming charged with light, these will proc font of might. And then with font of might, we get the increased weapon damage. Lastly is the class item which I like to run resilience mod. Distribution. Distribution is nice because it reduces all our ability cooldowns when using your class ability near your target. So if you're running around and protecting this particular build and you're close to an enemy and you do your marksman dodge, you'll dodge the enemy, reload your weapon, and if you are any of your abilities are on cooldown, this will help them regenerate a little bit quicker. I also like to use utility kickstart which is when your class ability energy is fully expended, you gain class ability energy. So when you do your marksman dodge, it just regenerates quicker. And doing marksman dodge does distribution, which gets all our abilities start to recharge quicker. And now the mod that will help us a lot is going to be elemental time dilation. Elemental time dilation is when you pick up your elemental wells, or again, our shards, grants you the time limited benefits can now stack. What it does is, with our 10 seconds of increased resilience in our dust field grenades, this will push that out to probably about 12 to 13 seconds, so we get more time of that weapon resilience, so we can be up longer and be that much more tankier. So Guardians, that is my Stasis Hunter build. I hope you enjoy it. Please stick around. I got some gameplay footage for you. If you are enjoying the content and the build, please leave me a like and comments in the section below. And by all means, Guardians, stay safe out there.